Do you ever wish you could have a life do-over, similar to a makeover or a house renovation? A chance to try something again with a different result? Try Again with Monique is a place where I will give you my take and also hear from you regarding the questions and challenges we all face in life. You will either be inspired to try life again, over and over again, or make some really good lemonade from those sour lemons. Either way, I got you. If at first you don't succeed, try again with Monique. Last week, I talked about self-control and how important it is for our lives. Please go back and listen to episode 30 if you haven't already done so. I promise it will help you. Today, I am going to talk about gentleness. Gentleness is the quality of being kind, soft, tender, careful, or mild-mannered. Some synonyms for gentleness are meekness, mildness, agreeableness, caution, compassion, mercy. I recently read what I thought was a really good description of a gentle person, and that is one who is down to earth, has humility, is quick to let things go, quick to forgive, is absent of a bad temper or belligerence, has a soft and supportive demeanor, and is considerate of others. Even if this is not who you are naturally, you can learn to be gentle, especially when interacting with people. Being gentle is a disposition and a behavior, and it is deliberately or voluntarily having forbearance when dealing with others. Think of what visually comes to mind when I say the following words. Gentle pet, gentle with children, gentle men, or gentle giant. Hopefully you get the idea. It has been said that a benefit of gentleness is that it allows us to interact with people in ways that are less harsh, more caring, considerate, and tender, both in our movements and actions and in the way we speak. The Bible tells us to restore anyone caught doing wrong with gentleness and with awareness of your own human nature and proclivity to be tempted or to do wrong. A great biblical illustration of gentleness uh, is some people called Pharisees interrupted Jesus while he was teaching to tell him about a woman accused of adultery and who was reportedly caught in the act. The Pharisees insisted that Jesus follow the letter of the law and punish her with stoning. Jesus, recognizing the seriousness of the moment and how the Pharisees were trying to pressure him, told everyone, whoever is without sin can cast that first stone. He then told the woman to go and to not sin again. Jesus clearly illustrated gentleness in his dealing with this woman as he reminded everyone to remember their own sin nature and temptations when dealing with others. This example also teaches us that we don't have to succumb to others' expectations or the way the world expects us to react or treat people. We can extend grace, we can show mercy, we can show compassion, and we can show love, even in instances where the punishment should fit the crime. There is another scripture that tells us to remove the plank in our own eye so we can see clearly to remove the speck in someone else's eye. I hope you realize that a plank is much bigger than a speck. It is easy to be gentle with people when you consider how you would want to be treated in a similar situation, doing to others what you would have them do to you. I found some great questions that you and I can ask ourselves to determine if we practice gentleness with ourselves and with others. And they are, number one, how do you treat your weaknesses? Do you castigate yourself when you fall short of your standards or impose stringent disciplines to overcome your weaknesses? Or do you treat yourself with compassion? Number two, how do you treat those who disappoint you, are caught in sin, or don't share your views? Number three, do you give grace for mistakes? Number four, when someone confesses something horrible they did to you, do you beat them up, judge them, ridicule them, or do you forgive and encourage them? The thing about gentleness is you can't force people to behave or treat people this way. You can only encourage and enforce it by example. There's a quote that says, a king must understand your gentleness shall force hearts to move much more often than your force shall move hearts to gentleness. I always say you can't legislate the heart. I'm going to say that again. You can't legislate the heart. But you can, by example, show people a better way, diffuse the situation, or influence the outcome with gentleness. The Bible says that a gentle answer deflects anger, but harsh words make tempers flare. I once read a gentle parenting tip. 
And that is, instead of getting louder to make sure your children hear you, try lowering your voice to make sure they listen to you. That is true of adults as well. We have all heard the squeaky wheel gets the grease. But the truth is, sometimes all you hear is the noise the loud person is making, not necessarily what they are saying. The reason being loud is not effective in many cases is when you shout or you scream, people either listen, they tune you out, they get annoyed, or they might even cover their ears. If you keep being loud, you may really need someone to listen one day, but since they have learned to tune you out, you might end up being the boy who cried wolf, having a real or serious need, but no one is listening or taking you seriously. Think about what happens when you speak in a soft voice or a whisper. People focus more on what you're saying and they sometimes strain to hear you. So your message is more likely to be heard uh, that way and at the very least you capture people's attention. Now I understand there are moments in which it is appropriate to increase our volume in speech like when calling your young child's name or giving them a directive to stop doing something that you know may be harmful. I'm not talking about those moments. I am talking about challenging yourself to use gentleness as one way to more effectively communicate and interact with people. I mentioned earlier that mercy is one of the synonyms for gentleness. The word mercy stands out to me because I believe it's a great picture of what gentleness should look like in our dealings with one another. Mercy means less severity than one deserves. Think about it. When a baby cries constantly, stays up all night, or a child is sick, we automatically have mercy on that baby and child, right? We do whatever we can to accommodate, love, protect, nurture, and meet their needs no matter how they are acting. I wonder what the world would look like if we were similarly gentle in our responses to one another and if we freely extended mercy to each other, sick or well, up or down, in or out, good or bad, fortunate or unfortunate, rich or poor, black or white, domestic or foreign, and so on. I have read that gentleness actually makes a big difference in our lives. Gentleness is not just being nice, but it is also surprisingly effective in getting things done efficiently and in maintaining peaceful and loving relationships. Gentleness is also a fruit of the spirit, in which, uh, which is one of nine qualities that should be evident in the lives of followers of Jesus Christ. The Bible says gentle words are a tree of life. The Bible also tells us to speak the truth with love. The love part reminds us to be gentle when doing so. If you think gentleness is weakness or unnecessary, then you've missed the whole point I was trying to make in this episode. There's nothing weak about gentleness. It is a true sign of strength because gentleness is strength under control. Perhaps that is why the Bible tells us to let our gentleness be evident to all. Bye for now. Thank you for taking the time to listen to Try Again with Monique. If you enjoyed today's episode, please take a moment to leave a review wherever you are listening. Please also remember to hit the subscribe button so you can be notified when new episodes are available. New episodes will be posted weekly. Please also like and follow us on Facebook. Try Again with Monique is a production of GM Associates released under Creative Common Attribution, non-commercial, no derivatives, 4.0 international license. Remember, if at first you don't succeed, try again with Monique.